One more. Hi everyone, I'm Big Al, and I am certainly beyond words excited to be here with Pastor Mark Fine on Going to Church Music. What you're going to be hearing here for about the next 20 minutes or so is a interview that I did with four-time Gospel Hall of Famer Les Beasley. I'm sure a lot of you know that name, the Florida Boys Quartet, about the gospel singing Jubilee theme song. This interview was recorded not long before Les is passing. He passed away November the 17th of 2018. And I am certainly glad for the first time to let everybody take a listen to what he and I talked about. So Les, let's begin with the beginning where you had went to Korea and then came back. I went to Korea. And when I came back, it seemed gospel music had transformed. I had sung in a group in New Orleans before I went to Korea. But uh, it seemed like there was uh, just a outflowing of gospel music every, every way you turned. And that was in the early 50s. Well, was Southern Gospel at that time, I, I guess I used the term Southern Gospel, but back in the days of the 50s, was it more uh, called just gospel music and you had four guys together and that was a quartet? Uh, did they have the uh, guitars? And I, I knew they wouldn't have electric, but uh, what was it, just piano mainly, or did they even have any musical accompaniment to it? Most groups just uh, had a piano. We started adding a bass and a guitar and just grew as time went by. It was a, a gradual situation, more music, more musical instruments. Gospel quartets in, in your era as you were growing up uh, certainly don't seem or didn't seem to have the places to play. So so where did they play, and how did that get started? Uh, did they play the schools or the churches? Speaking for the Florida boys, we had radio and mostly uh, high school auditoriums and also churches. We, we didn't work in that many churches back then, but uh, most of it was... Uh, the radio covered. And then when television came on the scene, it was just it exploded. If you were on TV, people want to come, come out and see you. Well, you started with a group, though, before the Florida Boys, didn't you? What, uh, 1952 or 53? The Gospel Melody Quartet. And a uh, big promoter in those days was uh, Wally Fowler. He got to calling us the boys from Florida. We got to be known as the boys from Florida. So we uh, decided one day we'll just change our name to the <laughs> Florida boys. So that's how it happened. We were uh, known for uh, our television appearances. And then when we got a nationally syndicated TV show that just um, multiplied our popularity even more so. Two members that stuck with you throughout the years, the Florida Boys Quartet, Les Beasley, you played bass and you sang lead, but then Glenn Aldred and Daryl Stewart, they, they stuck it out with you throughout all those years? Oh yeah, they sure did. Glenn Allred and, and Daryl Stewart's one of the finest uh, baritone singers that's ever, ever gone on stage. I, I can definitely say that. Daryl was a, uh, he might not play the piano but uh, he, as well as some people, but he would have a hard time explaining that to uh, people that enjoyed his singing or his playing. Because he was very If I remember when I was reading on uh, the Florida Boys, uh, it seemed to me when I watched you all on TV that, that all of you were just having a ball. But uh, one thing that they mentioned in these notes is his red socks. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, he started you wearing red sock early on, and that became his trademark. He had some red suspenders to begin with. That kind of faded away. The red socks stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, I'm sorry, Mr. Beasley. I I have to giggle about that because um, I can just see his feet moving up and down on the keys on the piano down there when he was when he's playing. Was the the energy between you three guys? That was something I would assume that would be that came natural rather than planned. I, I'm assuming you guys probably didn't plan a whole lot before you went to, to do a concert other than the songs. You're right. We didn't know how to plan. <laughs> 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 we, we were pretty dumb. We um, somehow we made it work. Young and probably went out of business several times and we didn't even know it. I look back on some of those episodes and I realize now that uh, you all, everything that you did was was actually natural and fun. And that's that's uh, one reason why everybody uh, everybody took to the Florida Boys and, and to the Gospel Singing Jubilee because it was uh, it would uplift you, especially with the music and and the singing that uh, you all brought to the Jubilee. Is there ever a time? Less that uh, you guys got into something, uh, maybe a concert somewhere, and one of you would look at each other and say, wow, I sure wished we didn't come here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we we call that uh, driving a post up in, in certain areas where we, no one came to see us. We'd drive a peg up as a reminder of not to go back there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> when you all traveled, uh, you, you didn't have a bus, did you? Did you all travel in car? We got a bus in uh, 1953. We traveled in automobiles before that. We thought we'd died and gone to heaven when we got a limousine <laughs> to travel in. And then we got a bus. We was in high cotton. <laughs> 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 thought we were. Oh, I, I think you were. I think it was some pretty fun times just hearing your voice talk about those uh, those great times with the Florida boys. I I know that you all have been on the Today Show, uh, Primetime Country, Crook and Chase. You said TV is where everything uh, exploded. And I know how powerful radio was uh, back in the 30s, 40s. And I know it was starting to lose a little bit of power because of that new that new toy that came out called TV. And then you come up with the gospel singing jubilee and i still yet think today that there'll never be a program and and you'll notice i don't say the word show i always believe that that was a program even if you didn't plan it uh because of you and the florida boys it just seemed to connect with every individual how did the gospel singing jubilee come about well we uh Sponsored on uh, TV by uh, Black Draft for uh, one season, maybe two seasons. Out of that, we uh, saw that there was a possibility that uh, there was a need for a religious singing uh, program on Sunday morning. And uh, we... uh, satisfied that need. I think that the real reason why show was, uh, why I called it a show, but you said you didn't think it was a show, but <clears throat> I guess in the way it was, they went out and sold uh, the idea of a 15-minute segment sponsored by Chattanooga Medicine Company, and then 15 minutes of time was sponsored by uh, Standback. 30 minutes of the hour was uh, left open for uh, sale advertising on a local level. 
that concept worked. We're talking with Les Beasley. He is a four-time Gospel Hall of Famer and four different Gospel Hall of Fames. He's practically laid the foundation for gospel music as we know it today. Les, the Gospel Singing Jubilee, uh, I wanted to emphasize on something. The reason why I called it a program, you know, the show part of that television show was the entertainment and the beautiful singing. But the reason why I called it a program is because on that Jubilee, there was uh, something that you wanted to do along with the other Christian people, and that's get the, uh, the Word of God out and use the Southern Gospel music to do that along with the entertainment, and that's why I called it a program. You're absolutely right. But that was the, the, the total program for the Gospel Singing Jubilee is in order to get the, the Word of God out, and, and you certainly did that. I, I wouldn't even try to even think of the of the infinite number of people that probably were saved and went to church just because of that program. Can you think in your mind there where you pick that name up, Gospel Singing Jubilee. I mean, those are simple words, but when you bring all three of those words together, they mean something, and it just it just rang, singing that theme in behind. Originally, I tried to use the name uh, Music City Jubilee because it came out of Nashville, and that was known as the Music City. We found out that uh, someone already owned that name, so we couldn't use it. The gospel singing jubilee just came natural. It was an old song. It was in a convention book. We just found it. We were looking for a theme song that seemed to fit the bill. Did you have uh, a whole lot of of quartets singing that song, or was that just one group and you kind of... um kind of got the voices echoing like that. It was about four groups of us that sang the song together. We did an album of the um, cast of the first Jubilee, and we used that theme song recording. When you guys came in to do the show, did you, like, do one show a week? Was it live, and did you rehearse it, or did you just do what? Less than the Florida boys do. You just came in and got her done. We did six shows at a time, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday usually. And we practiced some of it. It may not seem like we did, but we did. <laughs> <laughs> we rehearsed some in the early days, but as time went by, we pretty well uh, just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> just like a great show would be. Yeah. Do, do you remember who the first guest were that you had on the first gospel singing jubilee we tried to use country music people that uh, had name and but we found out later on that people didn't care much for that approach another thing that i would ask you about is your songwriting and i know that one of the fairly big if not biggest song for the florida boys was a song called lead me to the altar tell me about that that song was brought to me it was just a chorus and a fellow by the name of cartwright i wrote a a little bit of it and a partner of mine and back then name was ned parker he wrote some of it and i wrote the recitation that's the most requested song that we ever had the last thing that i that i would like to ask you Les Beasley is you've been on just about every gospel board on every gospel association. You've been the president of these associations. You helped begin many of them. But there is one particular award that is called the Dove Award. And you're the one that named that award. I believe it was, was it you and Bill Gaither that created that award? Bill Gaither and uh, Herman Harper and I were uh, on a committee 
to supply a program for the uh, the Gospel Music Association, which was a fledgling deal at that time. And we decided that uh, we needed to uh, have a uh, an awards for show. We didn't intend for it to be as big as it became. We had uh, smaller ideas, I guess you would say. But the board liked the idea, and they uh, decided to make it a full-blown deal. Then we, we had to have a contest to see what we were going to call it. And I came up with a Dove Award that seemed to stick. I named it. I, I know that uh, some people think that I designed the award. I, I couldn't draw a box. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't design the uh, award. Fellow by the name of McConnell did that. Do you have maybe one fond memory of your lifetime that that you might take ten seconds and and share with us? Even if it's two words, what what really sticks in your mind about all the things you've done and and the life you've led in in gospel music? Well, I never cease to be amazed at uh, some of the impact that uh, the songs that we have sung has had on uh, various people. One particular lady that I call, she said that she had gone through a terrible divorce and she intended to kill herself and she had the wherewithal to do it and she decided she would go out of town, somewhere where she wasn't known, and kill herself in a motel. And she said she was listening. She turned on the TV for some reason, and she uh, heard us singing. And she changed her mind. She went to church that Sunday. It was on a Sunday, and she gave her life to the Lord. And she, uh, at the time she told me about this, she was uh, teaching Sunday school at her church. That caught my ear. And probably many more times over that you don't even know about. Oh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed that conversation between me and four-time Hall of Famer Les Beasley of the Florida Boys Quartet. Here is that most popular requested song, Lead me to the altar. Lead me to the altar. Lead me to the altar. I hear Jesus, my Savior, calling me. His tender voice I hear. I feel his presence near. Lead me to the altar, 